This is really going to be a tragic situation. It, it's been called America's greatest wildlife tragedy is the decline of the bobwhite quail. Over the last few years, we've been doing extensive research with wild bobwhite quail in the rolling plains of, of West Texas. This area has been an area of abundant wildlife, particularly wild bobwhite quail. Uh, habitat for bobwhites on this ranch is as good as it gets. And in 2010, we had ideal weather through the spring and summer, a perfect season for breeding and for production of young birds. After 30 years of hunting this ranch, we had a phenomenon occur, which was so unusual and so unexplainable that it constituted my first real awakening to the fact that we had something going on with our bird populations that was unexplainable by the standard factors of weather and habitat. After extensive investigation, both in the field and the laboratory, one issue that's really popped up as a major culprit are parasites. We've noted two particular parasites of great concern to us and wild quail. One is called the eye worm. It's a parasitic nematode. And what makes it so destructive to quail is that this organism exists in the eye of quail, particularly behind the eye in the ducts known as the lacrimal duct. There, it's uh, growing to maturity and uh, producing eggs. What we found is that this worm is a hookworm-like organism. It attaches to tissue and feeds on blood. So as it's feeding behind the eye, it causes edema or swelling as well as inflammation. This is just adjacent to the optic nerve. But we're very concerned about it because what we found in the field already is that infections can proceed to almost pandemic levels of infection uh, in just a mere few weeks. So this can extensively infect our wild quail, and now we're very concerned about its long-term consequence. We've seen extensive numbers of eye worms in our wild birds. In fact, we've seen up to 92 eye worms in one quail. A blood feeder can have serious consequence for long-term survival in quail. An additional parasitic nematode that we found is the cecal worm. It exists in the intestines. We've noted that this worm can absorb nutrients from the quail. We found as many as 504 cecal worms in one quail alone. We're finding far more than we ever believed. Right now, at this particular point in time, we're facing an issue so important and so immediate that it demands all our resources. Our goal is to fix this problem so that we can ensure quail hunting for this generation and those who come after us. Because if we don't do something now, there's not gonna be a problem to fix. The only way we're gonna bring quail back to the glory days of West Texas quail hunting is through the active involvement of sportsmen. It's not gonna be federal dollars, it's not gonna be state dollars. We have to control our own destiny by raising our own money to have very focused research. And we're blessed with some of the best research organizations in the world happen to be here in Texas and they happen to be headed by quail hunters. What our research has revealed has been, uh, has been very promising and pointed us in the right direction. And the Wildlife Toxicology Laboratory has been working on a medicated feed treatment. The results so far are promising. We at this point believe we're on the right track to actually be able to introduce a medicated feed for wild quail to eat that will help them reduce, if not eliminate, parasite burdens. I've been very encouraged. What we've found is that the birds take readily to the feed, and the results we've seen are extraordinarily promising. We, we have to finish what we started, otherwise we're not gonna have a sport left. And it's really gonna come from sportsmen, direct donations, and through fundraisers, and that's what we need this, the help of the quail hunter to bring quail back to its glory days of West Texas quail hunting.